Wow, this is uh, Barcelona. I cannot tell you how much I like this city and how much fun it is. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction. It really is a challenge for us uh, on Halo to um, go through this journey with all our players to continue engaging them. And uh, I want to just uh, point out the name of the presentation. Just one more game is the feeling that I look for, uh, it's sort of our design philosophy at 343 Industries. We want to make sure that all of our games and all of our players are looking for that experience to come back to their game each time. And uh, as mentioned, it's really to the quality of the experience that we want to push for. Um, so a little bit more about myself. Uh, these are the games that uh, engaged me. Um, I was really, really into modding. I spent countless hours uh, modifying these. I mean, some of you in this room are probably responsible for a lot of lost time of mine. Um, but these really stood out as games that didn't necessarily have progression, uh, monetization. Um, when they built these, they weren't thinking of ARPUs or ARPU poos. Um, these are games that were able to engage players and make you just want to come back to them over and over and over again. So after that, I uh, started with Electronic Arts, and uh, the very first time I got a PlayStation 2 dev kit in my hands was just a magical experience. I could not believe that someone was giving me this new toy that I could go build multiplayer games on. Uh, so I worked at Electronic Arts Black Box in Vancouver, and then I worked with Sony and Slant 6 Games to uh, build a really, really hardcore um, competitive multiplayer shooter for the Sony PSP. And about six years ago, I joined 343 Industries. So if you haven't heard of 343, we are in uh, Seattle, just outside of Seattle, Washington, and uh, we inherited the Halo franchise about seven years ago. And it's all we do. We are an incredibly uh, passionate group of developers. I can't even tell you what it's like to work with uh, so many uh, Halo fans that are also developing a game. We have about 400 people, um, and we split everything up between Halo marketing, Halo consumer products, and I work on the core team, which is Halo 4 and Halo 5 development. So when uh, Reach came out, uh, Bungie was stepping away from the franchise, and we inherited a massively engaged, uh, incredible fan base. These uh, players were blowing us away. I mean, as a developer, we really had to step into the shoes of these people and really realize what they were looking for from us. And we started doing some research. Um, we started uh, going through and asking them, you know, what was keeping them in the game? What made them quit the game? Um, because we had that issue. And what would make sure that we were living up to the sort of the legacy of Halo? So for the first time, I'm uh, going to share some of the marketing and user, or sorry, user research that we, we did uh, for Halo. And this was the best memory. Um, this, if you played Halo, you probably would tell me that this was your best memory. It's probably tell me you're going to, you remember playing Halo 1, um, or you remember do, doing System Link. And this is really what players were looking for. They wanted to play the game with their friends, have good, good team matches, the very things you would really expect. And the worst memory at the same time is people. So it's really interesting for us because they're telling us, well, I want to be with my friends, I want to make new friends, but I also don't want to play with anybody that I don't know. And when people tell me why they stopped playing Halo, the first thing they're going to jump to is I get killed a lot, or they like to say that they go online and they get trash talked by a nine-year-old. And I can tell you, even after working on Halo for six years, it still happens to me, so you're not the only ones that have to deal with that. Um, we always say that whenever we launch a Halo game, there's, there's one day where we get to be awesome online, which is the day it comes out. And we've played the game for three years, and we're like, okay, we've got this. We get to one day of being great at it, and then, uh, and then the community just catches up and runs right past us and walks all over us. So uh, it wasn't really a lot of information for us to work from. I mean, we were just looking for these players, and we we're trying to figure out why are they stopping playing. They don't like people cheating. They don't want bad players in their games. But it really wasn't enough information for us. So uh, we went and looked for engagement data. So. Uh, we've always been interested in BI, and uh, luckily with Xbox Live, we were able to sort of mine the data and go through everything players were playing. So this is taking us back to 2004, uh, where we started looking at what, how players were spending their time online. And the biggest standouts here are the arranged game. Uh, I really can't understate this one enough. Uh, it's something that's been consistent through Halo 3, Halo Reach, and Halo 4. Uh, this is players getting together, creating their own game, fiddling with all the custom game settings, working in Forge and all the user-generated content to build their own game and play with their friends. Uh, so it's been something when we're thinking about engaging with players, we're always focused on how we can make sure we maintain this experience and give our players the flexibility and freedom to play the games uh, the way they want to. The other one that stood out from, uh, for us here is Big Team Battle is 4%. Um, and at the time, 
that was uh, really kind of the first time a big team battle or a big team experience had come on to uh, Xbox Live. So this is uh, eight on eight with vehicles. And you can see it had a very small representation here. And uh, I'll get back to that in a minute, but the important thing here is it takes time for these, these experiences and communities to grow. And across the Halo games, we've actually seen our community really develop and change. So at Halo 2 and Halo 3 timeframe, this was really the, the peak of uh, the MLG esports scene. Um, you can see here this teams of uh, four players and a coach. It's much easier to get together than seven or eight players. So it kind of fits with the user research and surveys we had where the players were saying, oh, we just want to play with our friends and our core group of players. And this, these guys would be the same ones who go and create a custom game every single night. They call it scrimmaging. And uh, that's basically the only way they play. So with Halo 4, um, we were really focused on this type, these types of players. We wanted to build an experience that uh, would cater to our classic audience, so we went in with a uh, very wide variety of game modes. Um, each one of these pictures represents a unique playlist or experience that we offered uh, at launch. And we were really focused on 4 on 4 and 5 on 5, and we had a very diverse set of playlists. And we got really, really surprised. Um, this data is 100 million hours of uh, gameplay. And it's uh, about six months after launch when we took this. And we were just blown away. Big Team Infinity Slayer, which is the eight on eight game, the Warthog, uh, and your Banshee and all the vehicles, that just was everywhere. That's all people were playing. And it was kind of really interesting for us because this is a community that was 4% with Halo 2, and now all of a sudden we're going into Halo 5, and it's the dominant um, scene. So when you're dealing with this, you have two massively popular experiences. Uh, it's really a challenge as a developer, because you can't start compromising, and you can't start merging them together. Uh, so we really were thinking about investing in our players and uh, making sure we were recognizing their different play styles. Um, so back to our playing with friends. The Warthog has always been our, our standout um, multiplayer experience. I mean, that's just where all the best memories come from at least for me when I was playing uh, Halo for the first time. And uh, vehicles are a big part of what makes us unique, so we really wanted to make sure we were respecting that community. So I'm talking about the balance now between our two game modes. So uh, there's a lot of players that will play 4-4, four four, uh, capture the flag, but they'll never touch the Warthog. And conversely, there's a lot of players that will love the vehicles, but they'll never go into the 4-4 four four scene. So if you're looking at getting back into Halo, I would definitely suggest jumping in the vehicle modes, because the uh, four and four modes are just getting as competitive as possible with our, our next for launch. So we had another engagement challenge. Um, we did a lot of DLC. Uh, fans are always asking for DLC. Um, these are maps that come out post-launch. And they were a really uh, problem for engagement because basically we were creating too many different player groups. We had players that had one or all or combinations of the DLC. And they were kind of conflicted because some of them wanted to play with their friends who may or may not have that DLC. And some of them wanted to play only the new DLC because they had just paid for it. So it created a really big challenge for us as we had six different population groups to manage in matchmaking. So we tried something. Um, and this was a little crazy, but uh, our community asked us to enforce DLC on our primary uh, Infinity Slayer playlist. And this is something that we asked through our social channels, we uh, got a lot of feedback on Twitter, and we uh, did polls on halowaypoint.com, and this is what happened. Uh, an 81% drop in our matchmaking in that playlist once we enforced DLC. So this was a really bad idea. <laughs> so we were, we were so challenged with trying to make a good experience with the players and also trying to handle all these different groups that we, uh, we went back and we undid this very quickly. Um, but it sort of set us up for Halo 5, um, where we decided to uh, basically provide all the post-launch uh, post maps at no additional cost. So we're going to group all these players together. And I think it's the right decision. I mean, think investing in our, uh, in our fans and our community is the right way to go when we want to engage our players. And this is much better. So now we don't have to deal with that problem anymore. <laughs> um, so I'm really happy about that. And the unified playlists are really um, going to help us uh, kind of handle all these different groups we have. Um, we have social players that are you know, building things. There are UGC players. They're um, really into Forge and making maps. Uh, we have our eSports hardcore, very, very competitive players that are, have great expectations on us. Our campaign, our players are looking for story. And then we also have our big team battle community. 
So I think uh, if these players were to take off their helmets and, and tell me what they were to think about Halo 4, the biggest gripe they're going to have is that we made some compromises between these experiences. Uh, they're going to tell us that there were some decisions we made that kind of merged these together. And um, when we're going into Halo 5, we really had to you know, make sure that we were thinking about this correctly. So we want to be an eSport. We want to have uh, Halo back in the eSports community in a big, big way. We need to create a very, very competitive game that if you go into um, for the first time, you're probably going to get killed instantly, unfortunately. And we couldn't compromise on that. We, we really couldn't leave this uh, community behind by creating a, a softer experience, as they might say. Uh, but at the same time, we wanted to be innovative. Uh, we couldn't just keep remaking Halo 1 and Halo 2 and Halo 3. Uh, so we have a new mode, Warzone, which I'll talk a little bit, bit about. But this was a, a great shot at Comic-Con of a player who hadn't played Halo for a while, and you now he's back into it. And we're really uh, offering a new, new experience with AI and multiplayer. So that was our big bet um, for Warzone. And then we also have these guys. This is the 405th um, division of cosplayers. And they're at Rooster Teeth Expo, which is a fan-hosted uh, community event, which have an incredible group of players. They stand here in these suits all day. I don't know how they do it, because <laughs> I would get way too hot just standing in the building. But uh, they're playing a game called Griff Ball. Uh, if you've never seen that before, you basically get a hammer and a sword, and you run at each other and fight over a ball. So it's a completely different multiplayer experience that we also have to cater to and support. So with Halo 5, we knew we, knew we wanted to invest in these fans. And we knew we wanted to really build and master this experience. And we decided to invest heavily. Um, this is the largest multiplayer investment ever by Microsoft, and the largest for Halo 2. We have our 4 and 4 arena experience, which is completely focused on our competitive core community in eSports. And then we have our 12 on 12 Warzone experience, which is all the vehicles, all the AI, and everything in the Halo sandbox, all the weapons, in one multiplayer mode. Um, it also has a requisition system. and uh, dynamic objectives on maps that are four times larger than anything we've ever done before. So it's a massive new battle. I hope you get a chance to play it at E3. Um, and we have a trailer that kind of illustrates the difference between these modes. Yeah, so it's just been incredibly exciting. That's about uh, three years of uh, incredibly crunched um, multiplayer development by a really, really talented team in Seattle. And uh, it's great to be on the road to show this off to everyone and get to talk about it a little bit more. Um, we also have our Halo Championship Series. So uh, we were really inspired by uh, Riot and Valve and Blizzard bringing their esports in-house. Uh, we think this is the right way to do it. And we committed to creating a Halo, Halo Championship Series. We ran a season last time for the Master Chief Collection. And we're going to be doing that again for uh, Halo 5. Uh, we already had a tournament, actually, at Gamescom, which ended up being incredible, running an uh, eSports tournament uh, months before the game came out. And uh, just to go back to our investment, our pros, I mean, these are, these are employees of 343. Um, they work for us. They uh, are fantastically dedicated uh, new developers. They were Halo pros from uh, Halo 2 and Halo 3, and they work with us for the last. They've worked with us for the last three years, um, sort of perfecting our competitive experience. Uh, they have touched every little bit of the game and uh, given us all sorts of balance feedback. And we even had them uh, start working on some maps. So I think bringing uh, pros in house and having that, uh, having those people to communicate with and work with the development team has just been invaluable. Um, 
And in closing, I mean, multiplayer engagement is a tremendous challenge for us. Uh, we are going to come out with this game. Uh, there's going to be changes. We're shifting to a games as a service, so we want to be very reactive to how our players are going to be um, are giving us feedback, and we're going to be updating the game. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all of our Halo fans that are looking forward to it, and uh, thank you for taking the time to listen through it. And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer.